The G Skill Ripjaws KM570 gaming keyboard features genuine Cherry MX mechanical switches, customizable per key lighting effects and macro support, full end key rollover, and more. Click the link in the description for more details. Excellent! What's up guys and welcome to my review of the Google Pixel XL. I've been using this for about one month now. I don't review smartphones too often on my channel so I thought I would use it for a while before rendering my opinion. And I even was able to road test this on my trip to Thailand, uh, which I left for the day after the phone arrived. So. That was convenient timing. So if you're interested in a Pixel phone, you've probably already seen or read some reviews, which I will quickly attempt to summarize for you right now. There's a Pixel and a Pixel XL. I got the XL version. The Pixel is smaller with a five inch 1920 by 1080, 441 PPI AMOLED screen and a 2770 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. Whereas the Pixel XL is larger with a 5.5 inch 2560 by 1440, 534 PPI AMOLED screen and a 3450 milliamp hour lithium ion battery so bigger phone gets a bigger battery beyond that the phones are pretty much the same so the rest of the video i'm just going to be focusing on the xl the design as many have noted is iphone like with a metal slab design curved edges and a glass panel on the back that's supposed to help with the uh, wireless reception for Bluetooth and your antennas. I found that with no case on, the glass piece also kind of helped me locate the orientation, which way was up on the phone a little bit more easily, so that was nice. I really like the fingerprint reader and the placement dead center on the back of the phone. It's easy to take the phone out, find the reader with your finger, and the phone should just unlock. Also, I will mention that no phone should have a protruding camera lens on the back, and that is an opinion that the Pixel happily agrees with. I don't like protrusive camera lenses. This one doesn't have one. The screens themselves are protected with Corning Gorilla, Gorilla Glass 4. The body is made of aluminum. There's USB type C for the plug and you can choose 32 gigs or 120, 128 gigs of internal storage. I felt that a 64 gig option in between would have been nice here, especially since there's no expandable storage via a micro SD card slots. Rounding out the specs, internally the Pixel runs on a Qualcomm MSM8996 Snapdragon 821 chipset, which is a quad core with two 2.15 gigahertz and two 1.6 gigahertz cores. It has an Adreno 530 GPU and four gigs of RAM. The OS will also be the latest version of Android. It's shipped with Android 7.1. Google has already rolled out some updates with 7.1.1, adding lift to wake and tap to wake functions to the phone. So you can quickly check the time or your notifications. It is Google Daydream VR ready as well, and my Daydream headset has arrived. So let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a video dedicated to just that headset. I do like the fabric exterior, it's quite nice. And then of course there is the phone's camera, which according to Google and many reviewers is the best smartphone camera available. 12 megapixel f2.0 with phase detection and laser autofocus, dual LED flash, 1.55 micron pixel size, and although it doesn't have optical image stabilization, it does talk to the phone's gyroscope to do some software stabilization that is not bad at all. The camera does a great job retaining color and detail, and I highly recommend the HDR Plus mode because it is awesome for very bright or very dark photos, and it doesn't take time to process. So when you're in HDR mode, no HDR photo lag between snaps as it tries to save or process the image. Finally, there is the software, highlighted by power savings tweaks and the integration of Google Assistant. Power savings works, and I don't exactly know how. I've noticed small things that the phone does here and there, such as the screen dimming subtly and automatically when the ambient light gets darker, for example. And I presume there's app optimization going on there as well and some other stuff in the background. But the upshot is that at the end of every day, I end up with anywhere from 25 to 40% of my battery life remaining. That's pretty good. Fast charging is also there and is nice too. And it'll charge the battery to full on the XL in about an hour and a half. Google Assistant is growing on me as well. And while at first it didn't seem too much different than Google Now when you say, okay, Google, and the functions that were already there, it is beginning to kind of learn more about me. Like it learned what my favorite animal was recently and uh, what my favorite pizza topping would be. I'm sure none of that can be used against me. It's not incriminating, right? Here's an answer from WordPress. The voice recognition is great though, as was evidenced just a few moments ago when it heard me very clearly when I said, okay, Google, and started to listen. It just did it again. 
Maybe, maybe it also awoke some of your phones too. I apologize if that was the case, but I do like the ability for Google Assistant to have more of a conversation with it, like a back and forth rather than just saying, do this and then it, it does that for you to the best of its ability. So let's sum up my Google Pixel XL video. In the good column for this phone is definitely the battery life, the power management, the overall speed, smoothness, and the lag-free experience that you get when you're using the phone. Uh, of course, the camera, not just the quality of the photos and the HDR range itself, but also the camera's speed. Thanks to the soft hardware and software optimization, the camera app just loads up within a second or two, and you can even easily switch between video mode and photo mode without any delay, which is definitely a big problem for some phones that might have really nice cameras, but this thing takes forever to load and that always kind of sucks. In the bad column though, we do have a few quibbles. The speaker is pretty, I don't wanna say crappy, but it's definitely not the best and it's in a bad spot on the bottom. It sounds okay, it's really easy to cover accidentally though. Uh, and especially considering how large the bezels are on top and below the screen, they should have just put the speakers there and had them front facing in stereo. That would have been much better. It also has relatively poor water resistance with an IP53 rating. So you do have some resistance to splashes and dust, but nothing near the IP68 water resistance rating of the iPhone 7 or the Samsung Galaxy S7. Wireless charging is also missing, which would have been very nice to have. My biggest gripes personally though would be the non-expandable storage with no micro SD card slot to be found, and just that it is very expensive. $650 to $870 is the range on these with no contract depending on the model and storage capacity you get. That is a price that stings even more when you realize that these pixels have replaced the Nexus line, so there's no more budget option for people who want the always up to date vanilla Android experience that I have grown to enjoy so much. That makes me sad. One last thing here to mention is durability. While I was traveling with my Pixel XL for two weeks, I was very careful with it, but I didn't have a case. So nonetheless, I came away with some dings and scratches to the finish. So definitely a phone case to recover is highly recommended. I've been using Diztronic cases from my past few phones because they make simple matte black TPU cases. Uh, I am not associated with Diztronic at all, but I will post a link to my case in the description if you guys are interested in which one I'm using. My favorite things about this phone though are shining examples of how mastering the fundamentals of what a smartphone should be and should do can help minimize any negatives. The battery life is definitely one big positive. I'm all for having a slightly larger or thicker phone if the battery is gonna last all day. The camera as well, both in the quality of photos and the speed with which you can load up the app to take pictures of video. And of course the overall fast experience of the phone, the Pixel's snappiness, smooth animations, fast app load time. And did I also mention that this phone doesn't overheat? Coming from a Galaxy X S6 Edge that I've been using up till now, which was a refurb, but did overheat and would drain the battery all the time and just a big pain in the ass, I, I couldn't go without mentioning that. So I have been very happy with my Pixel XL thus far, and if you can afford one, I think you would be too. That is not to say that there's nowhere to go from here though, as addressing the shortcomings of the Pixel with the next version could really create a device that aligns with what the vast majority of people are looking for in a smartphone. That is all for this video though guys, stay tuned for more videos coming very soon from my channel. Also down in the description you can find links to this phone, links to the case I used, links to my store where you can buy shirts, mugs, and pint glasses to get yourself some merch and help support me. Also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming very very soon. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. So we've been attacked by monkeys, uh, they've boarded our boat and they're eating all of our food. Oh, oh, there. <laughs> oh, there's the one with the baby. Yeah. Oh, the baby is coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah monkey baby. This is yeah. just an orgy of yeah. food. They're digging into every. He wants to take the whole bag. Oh, ging, ging, no ging. fighting. No fighting monkeys. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> you are a very messy eater. Do you know that? A very messy eater.